Hello and welcome to Evaluate This. In this short screencast I want to introduce you to Dynamic Access Control, perhaps the hardest feature to understand in Windows Server 2012. I want to start off by showing you what the user experience looks like. I'm logged into Windows 8 as a user, Ben Smith. Open my desktop and I'm browsing to some file shares on Server 1. I've got my corp data here. I go into that, it's empty. Log in as somebody else, and here I'm logged in as Alice. Do the same thing. Go into Corp Data, and I've got a document in here which I can now open. And indeed, I can edit. Fair enough. You could probably do that in Windows Server 2008 R2 with some groups and some file sharing permissions. But this is what's different. If I now go into a Windows XP virtual machine and log in as Alice again, and browse to court data, that folder's empty. So how has Alice managed to log in on one machine and see a file and log into another machine and not see it? And moreover, what if Ben and Alice belong to the same groups inside Active Directory? So what we've done in Server 2012, if I go into my domain controller here, is we've introduced something called Dynamic Access Control. And the first manifestation of that you'll see is when you go into the Active Directory Administrative Center. Perhaps the first thing to understand is claim types. And I've got a few of them here. And if we look at this one, for example, user country, what we're able to do is to browse an attribute of Active Directory, either by user or by computer, and make that part of a claim. That's one for a user. Here's one for the computer operating system. And you can see what we've done down here is to highlight the operating system of the computer the user is using. And then we have some tags, if you will, some properties of the resources we're trying to restrict access to. And these get marked in resource properties here. So, for example, if I look at my country again, all we're really saying here is that we're going to have a tag against a particular resource, which is going to be called country, and these are the possible values, Canada, United Kingdom, United States. And you can arbitrarily group those properties into property lists. I've only got the standard default one here, which is simply a list of all the resource properties we've just looked at. But you could go and create your own when life starts to get complicated. So we've got claim types and we've got resources. The next thing we do is we create some rules. I've got two rules here. Let's have a look at the user country department one. The key part of this is the current permissions. And if I edit this line, you can see what's going on. What I'm saying here is that the department my user is in from Active Directory, that claim type, has got to equal the department tag on the particular resource I'm trying to access. And the same applies to the country. So it's got to be a perfect match. The other thing to note up here is that I'm only going to do that test if the resource is actually tagged with a department and a country. So for example, my folders might not be. So I want to traverse my folders, even though I haven't tagged them for department and country, because, well, actually, they can have lots of departments and countries in them. Notice that some resource properties can have multi-value lists as well. But obviously, a user just belongs to one country. OK, so far. So we've got some rules in here. And here's the one for computer OS rule. And it works in much the same way. Except this time, I'm saying that the computer OS has got to exist on the resource. But actually what I'm saying is the device has got to equal Windows 8 Enterprise. And in fact, there's no point in setting it to anything else because it's only with Windows 8 that this actual value gets populated in Active Directory. In other words, if you're running Windows 7 or XP or anything else, there won't be a value in there at all. So I'm just doing a simple check. So my rule here is essentially saying you've got to be on Windows 8 if you want to access this. 
And we saw that earlier when Alice couldn't access that file. So having created some rules, we then create a policy. And here's mine, it's called evaluate this. And all this is doing is just saying which rules apply and then having this as a policy. Now the word policy is perhaps overused in Windows, but this is actually a policy. And we can see that because if I go into group policy now, you can see I've got a DA file server policy set here for the Contoso domain, specifically filtered onto my server one. And if I go and edit that, and go into computer policies, Windows settings, security, under file system here, I've got a central access policy. And if I edit that, that's the pointer to that central access policy that I've just created, my evaluate this policy. So that's how you set it up. One other thing to note, of course, is that this could get very confusing and could lay on top of other um, conventional permissions that you've already set up, conventional access control lists. And the principle of least privilege still applies. So if I go on to server one now, and look at my shares, my corp data share, and look at its properties, you can see we've got a new tab classification. Here are those values I set in the resource properties inherited from group policy. I set all of those to none so that any user can traverse this folder with my rule that I've implied. And then when I go into corp data and I look at my file, I can see the classification here is set to Windows 8 Enterprise United States and Finance. And then if I go into security, advanced, you can see my central access policy has been applied here. You can see the two rules underneath. And so if I go to effective access here, select a user, say Ben, select a device, say my Win8 virtual machine, and then evaluate his access, you can see which rule is causing the problem here. So all those on Windows 8, his country and department don't match those of the resource. If I change that now to Alice, you can see everything's okay. And conversely, if I now change that to Windows XP, as my machine, and evaluate access, you can see what's actually blocking it, the computer OS rule. So it's pretty easy to debug what's going on, a little tricky to get your head around the concepts. And I've got more notes about this on my blog post. So you'll probably want to try this in a sandbox environment before you set it up for real. And in order to do that, you're gonna need an evaluation edition of Windows Server 2012, which you can download from the link below. I've been Andrew Fryer. Thank you very much for listening.